Hi guys! Welcome to Red Puts Art in Your Face. Today we are doing some quick draws. Um, basically I have some setups that I've already done and I'm trying to get these designs out really really quick. They're not supposed to be like heavily involved or at least I'm trying to make them not so heavily involved. Um, I'm basically just trying to make things... No! Um, <laughs> as a uh, Basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to like get it out as quick as possible. Um, so that's what we're doing today because I, I, I'm not going for like fancy finishing touches today basically. So no like uploading it into Fire Alpaca and that kind of stuff. So uh, that's that's what we're doing and that's what we're going to do today. So I hope you guys are all thoroughly invested. Uh, we're basing everything off of Dragon Age today because uh, I was looking at my... Uh, my RP blog and uh, the uh, Dragon Age AU I have for or alternate universe for I have for my um for my art blog and I noticed there's a lot of issues and then I was looking at it more and it didn't seem to fit in with the characters as well as I really wanted it to so I've decided to switch things up a bit so um basically what's happening is is uh, I'm drawing to reflect that okay so. Here we go. Hopefully my kettle will join me in a bit. Who knows? Uh, I think she might be in the kettle. All right, so here we go. Sorry for the infinite screen there for a second. Here we go. All right, so I've got the basic ske sketch up for the pose for the first one. Uh, this one's going to be Dissolve, who's a mage. So I've got my art dragon mage decision book here for reference. And we are going to very quickly try and find some artwork based on the mages that I saw that I thought was really good. That's more of an assassin, but that would work. Sort of. Let's see. I love some of the like initial Inquisitor designs. They actually look really cool. Like, I really like them. I wish they'd gone with some of these. Not that the ones that we got aren't good or cool. It's just like some of these designs are just really awesome. But I think that's the way of most, uh, of most, um, like, initial designs. The initial designs tend to be really cool and outlandish, and then you realize that's not gonna functionally be, like, you can't functionally do that in a game, so you have to go back and change things up, and there's thrones, I don't give shit, Leilana, mages, I need the enemies. Basically what I need is the enemy section. Uh, let's see, Inquisition. And how shall we push ours? No, I was wondering why. And how shall we push ours? So, cage 80. Hey, hi, and how shall we Let's see. Ah, Dorian! Wait, is, is that Alistair with Dorian? Okay, that's. That's fun. <laughs> that's. That's lots of fun, and oh boy, man, the fan art, or the, uh, the original concept art for Dorian. Woo! And, like, Dorian to begin with, very fun. Alright, so, here we go. I might actually, now that I'm looking at it, I might lower this just a tad, just so I can get kind of a um, higher lift out of the hood design I have planned. So, here we go. Because I really do like how pointed the, uh, the hoods are for the mages out of Tementor. Not that that's what I'm going with for Dizol, but I do like the more pointed designs, so that's kind of what I'm going to go with here. Just kind of pointy. Hmm. Okay, so basically like... She is in the kitchen. I called it. Hello. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Nice, very pointy hood. I don't want it that pointy. I kind of want it to. 
sec, just a little, just so it would be a little more realistic. I always kind of like, because most of the time when you have male and female, like, twin slash counterpart characters, like, the, the male character will be the physical character, and then the female will be the one that focuses more on magic. And I kind of like that with Dezora and Dizol, it's the, uh, it's not that, it's kind of the opposite of that. Dizol is more about magic and being not, and being less physical. And his sister's way into the, like, let me fight you in the in your face. <laughs> like, let me get right up in your face and hit you right there <laughs> with a sword. <laughs> like, she had... Whoops. Are you okay? Yeah. Did, did, did something break? No. No? Some fell. Okay, we're okay? We're all good. Nothing broken? Nothing broken. Okay. That's, that's good to know. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool. Wireframe? Oh, thank you. Yes, I I do like doing some wireframe work for my quick draws. Okay, anyway. Um so got that. There's where's the stuff about the Venatoria? I just want to look at the Venatoria outfits for this. Okay, that's Morgan. Care less about Morgan than I should. <laughs> Not really what I'm going for anyway. Why will the status? It's supposed to be Sarah's character designs. Ooh! Finally! Venatori! Okay, here we go. So, yeah, that's more where I was going for anyway. I really do like the... You know what the Venatori designs actually kind of remind me of is the the mage designs from Skyrim. Which, I mean, those games, Skyrim and Dragon Age Inquisition, did actually come out at relatively the same time? I mean, not exactly the same time, but, but like, close to it. And I, I like how the, the some of the mage designs in Skyrim and Dragon Age have some similar elements, like... The, the mages in in Skyrim kind of have this, like, pointy thing going on in some of their outfit d choices. And it's the same for the Venatori in, um, in Inquisition. And I, always, I found that kind of to be very interesting. <laughs> just, just very interesting. So I'm going to go a little more pointed on the front than the Venatory designs that I'm looking at. Just because the Venatory designs are cool, but Zol is not Venatory, and I don't want him to look like he's Venatory. He should look like he got his ropes from something close to Deventer, though, because the Deventer robes always have, like, the best stats. <laughs> And I feel like that would be something that's important to the crew, is having the best stats for their gear. Okay, so let's see. The break in the legs is down here. So that's where, where we're going to put it. Create some flow to the outfit and add sash. And I don't want this to be quite as pointy as it is on the Venatory. So this is going to be a little more rounded. So more pointy on top, more round on bottom. <laughs> Okay. 
Like I said, I'm trying to draw this out as quickly as possible, which is actually turning out to be in my benefit here. Okay. Let me give the boot just a little bit of a heel. And I was actually, uh, when I was introducing some of the elements of the game to, uh, Michaela, because Michaela likes to sit out here with me when I do stuff like play Dragon Age and watch TV. Um, when I was, and, and she's never played Dragon Age Inquisition. I mean, Rob hasn't either, but um, Michaela's even more unused to video games. So I was, um, I was telling her about some of the design choices in the game. Like, like, let me tell you how, how, how much my knowledge of games go. <laughs> um, my first ever game console was the original Game Boy. Yeah. And it's always been handheld up until my dad got remarried. And, um, my stepmom basically said, what? You, you, you don't have a PlayStation? Not even, you have nothing? You, all you have is the Game Boys? What? <laughs> and so basically that was when um, Dad, my brother, and I... I like those boots better. Why? Walked out and... Let's do those boots. Went shopping for a PlayStation 2. <laughs> of which I've maybe played all of two or three games on. Hmm. So, yeah. That's my knowledge of games. Sorry, I distracted you. No, it's cool. Uh, anyway, so I was, I was, I was, um, I was telling her, oh, you know what, fuck it, I want thigh highs. I'm gonna give, uh, Dizzle some thigh high boots here, which I need to, where's the coat for it, but only just so I can get the design down. Thigh high boots are always cool to me. Right? Even on dudes. I like thigh high boots on everybody. <laughs> Even higher. <laughs> Let's go as high as possible. There you go. Anyway, so I was going over uh, the the design choices for, for the game and some of the influences they might have had, because I took a history of fashion class once. It, it was the class I got the lowest grade in in art school, but, well, other than those three classes, I failed. Um, <laughs> which I had to take over again. But that was when I was, uh, that was actually my first semester. I failed three classes in my first semester. It was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And I made the stupid decision of being like, I'll have all of my classes on just these two days and then I can do my homework. Oh. Right? So oh. then it became four oh, no. hour long classes. Oh, no. <laughs> right? Oh, it was the stupidest decision I've ever made in my entire life. Just, yeah, no, I piled all of my classes into... Three days. Sorry, I said two originally, but it was three days of classes for 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 your whole seven days. How many <laughs> units? And it was okay. That that I had to take six classes that semester. No, four. I think it was four classes. Mm -hmm. No, it was it was six. It was six. So it was six classes. I had Photoshop. Uh, Figure drawing, um, well, oh, oh, um, analysis of form, figure modeling, and oh, one other class. Or maybe it was just the four. Maybe I'm can See, there was so much I piled into that semester, I can't even remember it all. It was just, there was so much that I decided to do all at once. And it was like, because I, I was thinking like, oh, they're two hour classes. That's not so bad. Mm -hmm. Not realizing, because I, I had never taken a real art class before. Mm -hmm. Before I went to art school. Yeah. Like an idiot. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to be an illustrator. This will be fun. 
fun! <laughs> like, I took this one, like, group art class in college, but it was community college, so of course it's not that great. You know? You know, teacher's just basically doing as best as she can, and it's not... You know, the best circumstances. Yeah. Anyway. But, like, so that that was, the, like, the, the, the most I'd actually had. Besides, like, these, fo like, design Photoshop classes in high school. So I could use Photoshop great. But, and the Photoshop class, super easy. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, even though it was new technology, it was, it was super easy for me to follow. Yeah. And I never had a problem with that class, but, like... The, I, I had ne otherwise I'd never had an art class. So going from no art study at all to here's figures, like here's figure drawing. We're going to stick you in a class for two hours and <laughs> basically you get uh, a couple of breaks in between. And also here's this backless freaking like two by four thing that we sit you on. That tall thing that you would think was for your back. No, that's for your easel. You don't get to have something supporting your back. Have fun. <laughs> and I'm like, it looks like one of those horses for, like, gymnastics. And they're like, yeah, we call it a horse. And I'm like, fun? No, not fun. Not fun at all. Least amount of fun I have ever had. And I would have, like, four hours of that. Because I, I would go from figure drawing to, to figure model, uh, to uh, analysis form. Mm -hmm. Which is in the same building, basically the same class, except for in one you're drawing people, and in the other you're drawing things. Mm. So, both very helpful classes. Don't get me wrong. They're both very helpful. Do not take them in two-hour stints together, because you will kill yourself at the end of it. <laughs> Alright, folks who are paying attention at home. Like, I wanted to die, because my back would be just in pain. So oh. much pain. Because it's four hours of sitting with no back support. Yeah. No, they were four-hour classes. The short uh, the short classes were two hours. I took four hours of that. So it was eight hours of sitting with no back support. Oh, God. Yeah. Eight hours. That's why it sucked so much. I'm thinking, why why was I complaining about four hours? And I'm like, oh, because it wasn't four hours. It was eight. Because... <laughs> Like, you got to choose. Did you want to take the two-hour classes twice a week, or did you want to take the four-hour classes once a week? And I was like, once a week. Once a week sounds great. Because then I can have all that time for homework. Because uh -huh. there was a shit ton of homework. Yeah. No. No. Like, take the take the two-hour stints. The four-hour classes are hard. <laughs> Especially if you're taking them all together. Like, they well, suck. That okay, sucked. and 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 I will I will explain myself for those of you listening. Red was an art major. Yeah. I was a music major. And typically, when people start complaining about classes, I'm usually like, oh yeah, how many classes? How many units? Right. Because for music majors, note for anybody who wants to view music as their major, um, you can do 16 units worth of classes, but that usually adds up to about eight or nine classes altogether. Yeah. Which suck. Right? And you're just like, why did I do this to myself? Anyway. And I mean, it's, it's not necessarily all that bad, because like a lot of the one unit classes are like maybe an hour long at most. Yeah. But the homework that's sometimes required of those classes... Is insane. Is, is maddeningly insane. Yeah, no, so like... I did not enjoy myself my first semester, and I flunked out, like, three of my classes because I I burned out, and I burned out quick. Because, I, like I said, I'd never taken an art class before, and I overwhelmed myself, and mm -hmm. it, it was not pretty. All that design work I just did, and I have to erase all pretty much half of it. Oh, no. <laughs> well, because, like, you won't see it. But anyway, so I took this history of fashion class once I switched my major to writing, and I started taking all my classes online. Um, and in my history of fashion class, which, oh my god, I, I, I got really mad at that teacher. <laughs> because basically, if you weren't a history of fashion, if you weren't a fashion major, she pretty much was like, why are you even in this class? <laughs> and I was like, well, because I, I want to, like, draw and maybe do designs, and, and if I do them 
wrong than I want to know. And anyway, so I, I took her class and, um, like I, so, you know, I, I learned quite a bit about, you know, hit, like the fashion, you know, fashion, the history of fashion in my history of fashion class. And that makes sense. yeah, so I can, I can recognize, like, it was so funny because my mom and I went to go see Dunkirk and which very loud movie about war. Um, but really cool. And I was able to tell the difference between all of the, like, various units and, and like, people from different countries. Because you had French soldiers and, and, and English, like, soldiers. And then you had the Scottish Dragoons, who all had different uniforms. And my mom and I are watching the movie, and I'm like, oh, those are Scottish Dragoons. And she goes, how the fuck do you know that? Because it's, like, in the middle of no thing. And I'm like, they're hats. And this is before they even speak. And by the time they start speaking, my mom is like, oh, they are Scottish. But, like, I had pointed them out, and I was like, those are the Scottish dragoons. And she goes, how the hell do you know that? I'm like, because of the hats they're wearing. The, that's what the Scottish dragoon units wore. And sure <laughs> enough, they were Scottish dragoons. And, and she's like, how do you know that? I'm like, we, we had to learn military uniforms. Military uniforms influenced a lot of, his, of the, the history of fashion. And, and it's not, and it's not like that happened just in World War II. I mean, that was the case for a lot of history, including, um, some medieval and, and like, let's take, uh, hmm, the Hundred Years' War or the Regency era. Lots of fashion influenced by the military mm -hmm. during that period. Um, but... Playing Dragon Age is fun for me because I can I can see like the different elements of design in 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 the costumes and like everyone's like oh the Orlesians look so French I'm like really because they look really Italian <laughs> like their costumes are very Venetian like not just the masks I mean the the high the really low waisted corsets mm -hmm. that you see on the women that go pretty much all the way down to the upper thigh very Venetian. Like the the high collars and the rounded fluffy fluff around the collar, very Venetian. The 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 style of the Orlesians is very Venetian. The 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 attitudes they have and and the their their culture very French to a point, but their their history is or their fashion so very Venetian, which. Kind of makes sense. So I don't mind it. I actually fi think it's a cool combination. Because then you have uh, Antiva, which is a weird combination of northern Italy during the reign of the uh, the Medicis. And because the Medicis were merchant princes. And what, and what, do, and what, and who rules uh, Antiva? Merchant princes. And a king. But mostly merchant princes. <laughs> And I'm like, and that is very Italian, but they speak Spanish, and their clothes <laughs> kind of reflect more Spanish than Italian. Mm -hmm. But Val would likely been elf rogue in a, a vault to full face mask. Yeah. Like, and I, I love, don't get me wrong, I love Venetian style. Like, I love that period in history where Venice was basically the center of the world. Because it did not last very long. But the fashion that came out of that lasted so long like a lot of the attitudes that came out of that era era lasted for for ages and and it's the same with the fashion the fashion that came out of the era uh, that era lasted for ages i mean like venetian masks have not really changed i mean there's been some changes but for the most part a lot of the fashion for venetian masks have not changed in hundreds of years. I mean, Venetian masks, when you see them today, uh, the methods of making them uh, have changed a bit. Not as much as you'd think, but they've changed a bit. Mm -hmm. And, but, uh, like, the the fashion of, um, fashion of the mask has not really changed all that much. Which is cool. I like that. I think that's neat. And there used to be all of this, like, like, okay, so there's different things that have, like, a different kind of language all of their own. Like, tattoos in certain, um, like, tattoos in different cultures have a different language all of their own. Like, a tattoo that you get 
in, say, Russia is going to have a different, if you're Russian, has a different, like, meaning behind it than a tattoo you would get in South America or a tattoo that you would get in Japan. You know, tattoos have a language all their own. And, and it's the same with, you know, clothing designs and masks. Masks used to have a language all of their own. Yeah. Uh, they were very important in, in Venetian society. And that's why I kind of liked their inclusion in, in the Orlesians. Because when you read the books, the books talk about how different, like, materials and different styles have different meanings. You can recognize who someone belongs to just by looking at their masks. And I think, and like where their standing in society is, and I thought that was just the coolest thing when I was reading the books. Mm -hmm. Immediately after that, it lost me though, because then it got into political intrigue, and I hate political intrigue. It just <laughs> bores me to tears. So, like, as far as, as uh, oh, what was that book even called? I think it was like something mass. Anyway, like, uh, as far as far as that book goes, like I liked uh, a lot of the beginning part of it, and then like as soon as it started getting into political intrigue, I lost interest. And then halfway between after that, it became like half political intrigue, half like random adventure. And I was like, I like the random adventure part, but I hate this part where like in between they're talking about the political intrigue again. Like it's so boring. <laughs> One of them is having an illicit lesbian relationship, and it's just now boring me to tears when it should be the most interesting part of this goddamn book. <laughs> like, this should not be boring me. <laughs> oh. Are you talking about Comedia del Arte? No, I was, well. Del Arte? I, I think you're talking about the, the language of mass and that was kind of what I was talking about, but I was talking more about, like, um, the Dragon Age books. Because there's, uh, uh, there's a, a Dragon Age book that takes place, well, there's two that take place in Orlais, and, um, one of them is, is about Empress Selene and how she gets to the point where you find her in Dragon Age Inquisition, and the other one is, uh, about, uh, how the Mage Rebellion gets started. And I actually like the one about the Mage Rebellion better, even though, like, the, the Mage and and Templar thing, I'm not as, like, passionate about it as a lot of people on the internet are. <laughs> like, a lot of people on the internet are like, if you support the Templars, then you support oppression, and you're awful, and I just can't date you, and 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 I'm like, guys, it's a game. Guys, chill. It is not actual reality. Cool your jets, dudes. Right? Like, I know you're using it as a metaphor for, like, all the oppression in the world, but, like, chill your role, maybe? It's a game. <laughs> and and then, like, I'm, like, for real, I'm just like, why are people, like, so crazy about... It, but, so I, like, I'm not all that as passionate about it as, like, some other people are. I just find it fascinating because it's the story of the game. But, so I was expecting to like that book less... Because I just find, like, a lot of that to be kind of irritating now. Mm -hmm. But I actually found that one way more interesting. A, because Shale is in it. And what's not to love about a, 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 a sentient golem that is just irritated about, you know, about everyone else? Like, loves being a golem, kind of hates everybody else. Why are you so stupid and squishy? <laughs> And also, birds suck. <laughs> and that's why I love Shell. So, Shell's in it, so what's not to love about that? And also, Wynn is in it, which a lot of people are like, ugh, Wynn. And I'm like, no, but I love Wynn. Wynn is cool. Don't, don't hate on my soft grandma. Back off. <laughs> Leave soft grandma alone. I love soft grandma. Grandma, like, soft grandma drinks. That's the best part about her. <laughs> she has a full conversation with Ogryn about, like, what makes the best sort of mead. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> or ale or something. I'm like, yeah! <laughs> I love that. She's great. <laughs> but, like... And the best part about that book is, is, like, the, the Mage Rebellion is kind of started by both sides, which I like. Mm-hmm. 
because you have this like you don't like that you have uh this mage who really wants the mage rebellion to start like really wants the mages to break away and be on their own and thinks like the fact that the seekers were hiding that the right of tranquility could be reversed to be basically justification because really they could have been making themselves immune to uh, demon possession all this time and figuring out a way to like fix the issues with changing back and all that stuff like so she uses it as justification and kills all these people and but you're like okay but that doesn't like you're still murdering people like cool backstory still murder <laughs> right <laughs> And, and at the same point in time, you had the Templars who, why are you making things worse on purpose? Stop that. Stop being a dick to mages. You're just making the situation worse. And, because, like, like, Cole actually talks about it, about how he hated mages and how he kind of wanted the, the war to begin just so he could kill them all. And I'm like, that's, that's not okay, man. <laughs> like, you're, you're not really helping out your side Cool motivation, still murder. I feel like I'm constantly in that position. Like, everyone's like, but Anders was justified because of blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, and he still committed murder. <laughs> like, cold-blooded freaking murder that he may have talked Hawk into. Like, cool story, still murder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, I, like, I'm, yeah, like, the mages needed to, like, have something of a, you know, they needed to rewrite the, the rules of the, of the game that they lived in, because it only really benefited a few. But the way that, that Anders and some of the other characters go about it, you're like, that's not how you do that! <laughs> like, that's not helping, you're making things worse, why thing? Cool motivation, still murder. Like, basic, yeah, like, basically, I'm just... Cool motivation, still murder. <laughs> um, and, and, and you sit there, and you're just annoyed at them, because you're like, you're not, you're not actually helping your cause. You're actually making things worse. And, and I feel the same way about, like... Um about some of the other stuff you run into, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, and it's so weird because, like, I have this this group I, I follow on on um, on Facebook, and, and, the, and the rules are, you know, oh, you, you, you can't turn, you know, uh, you know, no, uh, basically getting into arguments about fan theories, you know, no making things personal, basically, basically like, no bullying rules. Mm -hmm. which are great. I love them. I'm not, I'm not criticizing the group. I think the group is great. But sometimes you get these weird, like, not arguments, and then you sit back and you're going, somebody's gonna get kicked out of the group for this, because <laughs> this is gonna go downhill fast. <laughs> and I can always tell when it's about to happen, because somebody will post, like, a poll. And it will seem innocuous at first, until somebody makes a comment, and then you're like, oh, that's dragging it into the real world. Nope. <laughs> somebody's gonna get hurt and the latest one is now there's a poll going that says the maker real or not and I'm like this seems innocuous because the maker is a, is a figure inside the game but I can tell this is gonna devolve into all religions are stupid versus why are you being a dick to all religions mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. And, like, it was very predictable, because that is exactly what has happened in the comments. <laughs> and I'm just like, guys, I understand. Some of you are atheists, and that's cool. Stop making it sound like you're superior for being atheists. You're not. <laughs> you're just a person like everybody else. Doesn't make you smarter. Also doesn't make you more stupid. I'm just saying, like, don't use it as a way to be superior. You're not. Yeah. <laughs>
Like, you're just, you're just a person. Like, everybody else. You know? Be having faith doesn't make you more stupid. And being atheist doesn't make you more smart. Doesn't make you smarter. See? <laughs> not that I am an atheist, I'm just saying. But, like, and I know that's not, I'm not saying all atheists are like that. I have known very, like, I, I, I dated this guy who was an atheist and hung out with nothing but atheists. And they were very nice people. And I liked them. They were cool. But there are some people who think that just by the benefit of being an atheist, that makes them smarter than everyone else. And I hate to put this out there. It doesn't automatically make you smarter. <laughs> like, okay. My take on atheists believing that they're smarter than the average bear <laughs> um, oh I think boils down to they're the ones who will ask the hard questions. And those who are of strong Christian beliefs won't do that because it will challenge their faith or something like that. Which... But the thing is, is, like, there's actually quite a few... I'm an atheist and I'm a freaking dumbass. <laughs> you're not a dumbass, Phoenix. I love you. I think your writing's great. But, like, I... I, I but the thing about a lot of atheists is that they've... they've I, I feel like the atheist... Or at least not a lot of atheists, but I feel like the atheists who feel like they're superior just for being atheists fail to comprehend the fact... Or... Not comprehend, but... Uh, fail to take into account that there's other branches of Christianity that are like, no, question everything. Like, I'm a Unitarian Universalist, and a part mm -hmm. of being Unitarian Universalist is literally going out and finding out what faith means to you. And coming back to the church and presenting it. And, and basically, and it's not like defending it like a thesis, but basically... You have to present it like a thesis, <laughs> like a thesis, like a thesis, like a the thesis. Thank you. I don't know why I keep doing that today. Um, no, it's okay. I'll translate. Yeah. And I go for Rob all the time. <laughs> and I, I really like that because a lot of what makes Unitarian Universalist the church that it is is that you have to basically question everything. A lot of it is basically like, here's what the Bible says, but um, here's also what the Buddhists say, and and here's the Quran. And here's this other thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I learned about Hinduism initially in, in Sunday school. In the Unitarian Universalist Sunday school growing up. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they also helped me do my homework, too. Like, math. That was great. <laughs> and science. They were big on, like, here's evolution. I'm like, yay! And they're like, evolution is a fact. I'm like, well, it's a, it's a scientific theory, but it's basically fact. This is what has actually happened. God may or may not be behind it, but either way, it's cool. And I'm like, thank you, Unitarian Universalist Sunday Church. I've learned a lot about science today. <laughs> I mean, that that is one of the things that I do like about um, my particular branch of belief. Yeah. Which is um, eclectic Wiccan, <laughs> for those who don't know. Um, is basically... It's okay to cherry pick what you want to believe in. Yeah. In essence, like you, you still have to follow the the Wiccan read of "and it harm none, do as you will." Yeah. Which I tried explaining to my universal uh, uh, Unitarian. Yes. Unitarian. Universal Unitarian. Unitarian. Mother. Un yeah, Unitarian Universalist. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of hard for her to understand how I could equate the Wiccan read to the teachings of Jesus of, um, love thy neighbor as thyself. Which in my mind made perfect sense at the time. It, for her, it still makes not sense. quite so much. Yeah. Phoenix is kind of right. <laughs> I don't care what the hell you believe in so long as you're not an asshole. Yeah, basically. Uh, basically, I, I don't I don't really care what people believe in so long as they're not jerks. Yeah. Like, 
Because here's the thing. I've, I've gone to a lot of churches, I, I, I including uh, several, like I've been to a Hindu te- temple and I, I've visited a mosque and and my, my cousin is Jewish and I've gone to temple with him before. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I grew up in a family, like, or at least, I grew up in a family that has Baptists, Quakers, Jews, Catholics, somebody who went from Baptist to Catholic and really pissed off her mom. <laughs> um, like, I've got a little bit of everything in my, in my family. And my mom, you know, growing, uh, growing up, one of the things that she and my dad agreed on before my dad died was that I would be raised Unitarian Universalist because, you know, it's, an, it's, they're basically very accepting and they're that odd mix of everything. So, I was cool with that, and, and but I grew up in a severely super Christian area where it was like you had the mega churches and the like, uh, you know, Harry Potter is spellcraft and thus bad, and none of our t- kids should be exposed to it kind of thing going on. I'm sorry, Robert. <laughs> So I mean, he did grow up in that yeah. particular environment. Well, we come from this. We grew up in the same area. So, yeah, yeah, but thankfully, um, his mom was very much in the mindset of he's not making animal sacrifices. He's not hurting anybody. He's just playing a game. <laughs> cool your jets, ladies. <laughs> right. And my mom's like, do whatever you care. Well, do whatever you want. I don't give a shit. <laughs> And, and so, like, I went to, to school with a lot of people who were super conservative Christians, and some of them were really good people who were really nice, and there was nothing inherently wrong with them, mm-hmm. and others were the most awful people I've ever met, you know, or, or just complete, just, who use their faith basically to excuse their freaking biases. Mm-hmm. And... Or to excuse internalized sexism, in one case. That made me just, like... It, I literally sat there for five seconds with this chick just staring at her with this expression of, like, co- severe concern. <laughs> like, are you okay? <laughs> because... Are you thinking clearly? Did somebody roofie you by accident? Less that and more... Are you in a cult? Do I need to call the police? Like, do you need help? Because, like... To, to, and to be fair, um, Robert has explained that the church that he went to when he was little yeah. was essentially a cult. Right. <laughs> it's very easy to go from being a, a legitimate uh, religion to, this is a cult. <laughs> um, Harry Potter's the devil's work. You mean those walk, walking atheist factories? Yeah. Anyway, like, there's this chick, and, and, and it always happened in P.E. Why was it always P.E.? Anyway, there is this girl who we were talking about uh, what we wanted to do in the future, and, and like, uh, like how we thought, like, our future uh, husbands were going to be at the time, because I hadn't come out as bi yet. Mm-hmm. So... You know, and, and I was like, well, I want to be equal to my husband. She's like, well, why would you want that? Because Eve sinned and da 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 And, like, so women must be subservient to men and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, who hurt you? What's wrong? Like, that is no. And I, I think what I actually said to her at the time was, are you shitting me? <laughs> like, I was just, I was like, No. Because, like, and I was, like, so odd, like, and, and it was, and her best friend who was sitting there with her was also looking at her like she was crazy. <laughs> like, all of us were just like, what the hell? <laughs> and, and this is, like, some of the same group who, um, would later pin one of my friends in, in the, in the locker room and start, like, basically terrorizing her. And I was like, leave her the F alone. She's, and they're like, she's a Satanist. Like, how are you going to defend that? And I'm like, because she believes in Satan. And I'm like, I thought all Christians believed in Satan. And they they were just, they got this look on their face that just walked off. And she's like, you know, I am a Satanist, right? I'm like, I don't give a shit. They were being dicks. (laughs) Like, Like, and it's so funny because the Church of Satanism, 
actually kind of like good guy Satan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I did read up on, on on a little bit of Satanism as well. Like, the Church of Satanism is actually kind of a cool religion. I thought about converting at one point. <laughs> to be fair, I've thought about converting to a lot of different religions. <laughs> So it's not just that I thought once about becoming a Satanist. I have also thought about becoming a Hindu very seriously. I actually did practice some Hindu traditions for a little while before I was like, you know what? I, I can't give up eating cow. <laughs> cow is delicious. Right. Like, I can give up eating bacon. Can't give up eating cow. Like, okay, that, that is interesting to me. Yeah? Why is it that when we... Uh, the the meat that omnivores eat yeah more specifically human omnivores yeah um why is it that when it's birds yeah we use their actual names yeah so it's like this is a chicken it goes it goes cluck cluck <laughs> this is the chicken that I'm eating we got it from KFC. <laughs> Why is it that, and when you go to, like, um, when you go to, like, say, Burger King, you ask for a beef patty instead of a cow patty? Which, I understand. <laughs> I was about that to makes, be like... <laughs> that makes complete and total sense when I say that way. <laughs> but, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, like, why do we ask for beef instead of cow meat? And I'm like, I think the main reason for that is, is that we're... Clo more closely related to cows and pigs. Oh, so we have to distance ourselves? Yeah. Because cows and pigs are not birds. Bur you know, they, 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 they give live birth, they don't have eggs. You know, they... Cows and pigs are not related to raptors. Got it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We have to take out all the raptors. Yeah. So, like... We're... we're <laughs> We're more closely related to them. So for, for us, I think it's it's kind of like we have to distance ourselves because we, we realize that we're eating something that's a little bit closer on the evolutionary scale to to human, you know? Yeah. Okay. Like and, for me. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, e even if, uh, you know, even if back before we believed in evolution, you still had this, like, cows gave life birth and suckled their children the same as we do. <laughs> So maybe kind of should distance ourselves and call it beef. I'm sure there's actually another reason for it too, but... Then we can ask Rob when he gets home. Yeah, I don't wanna. <laughs> <laughs> I like my explanation better. Anyway, so... What was some of the other, like, uh, things I was I was discovering about uh, the designs in Dragon Age that I thought was cool? Um, oh! Okay, so like... Design-wise, I find it interesting that, like, uh, Tevinter, vi like, all of the super pointy, like, stuff in, in, in their designs mm -hmm. is, like, for instance, Dorian speaks, like, some weird combination of Latin and something else, which I like. I think that's cool because it kind of ties uh, Tevinter in with the Roman Empire, which... That makes sense, because the Roman Empire had, like, several falls before it actually fell. Which, again, feels a lot like Tevinter. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like that, but the clothing-wise, clothing-wise, uh, like, it's this weird combination of, like, Middle Eastern and, like, I almost want to say... Portuguese? Like, no, not Portuguese, no, um... Actually, kind of, yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just, like, this weird combination of things. And and I kind of like it because it creates this kind of, like, pointy look. And some of the characters are supposed to look, like, really sinister because they're mages. And they're, like, some of the major villains in the game. So, like, I get that. But, like, I, I kind of love the, the pointy look to them. And I like that it's kind of more, like, Byzantine Empire Rome than it is, like, Greek Empire Rome. Which... Also kind of makes it weird because you're like, uh, that seems a little racist on our end. <laughs> like, creative speaking wise. Like, why is it that we consider that particular aesthetic to be more, you know, threatening? <laughs> yeah. Or evilish? 
But I, I like how they incorporated it into Dorian's design and Dorian being the good guy to Venter. <laughs> so I, I think, but I think that was an interesting way to take it. Because I, I, you probably could not use like ancient Roman designs in a game where you have stuff like trebuchets and shit. Because like, or, or crossbows, I should say. Because like by the time we had crossbows, the Roman Empire was way gone. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I can kind of see, like, why togas wouldn't exactly be the way to go. Although, there is something kind of toga-ish about some of um, Dorian's designs. Because of the way, like, it, it's like you have, like, the upper piece, and then there's this weird, like, flowy skirt thing. Mm. And I'm like, that could be interpreted as, like, Middle Eastern, and could also be kind of interpreted as as Roman. Like, like, a, like, like a toga. Yeah. Because some togas did that, so I, I don't know. It's it's some interesting design choices that I and think are cool. Y- you mentioned that, and I'm almost thinking, doesn't, like, Egyptian hieroglyphs look like that? Yeah, to a point, yeah. yeah. They also have kind of an interesting Egyptian thing going on, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're supposed to be, like, pyramids and shit, and, like, when you go to, like, one of the Dementor temples at one point to go look at the, the dragons for uh, this thing for Cullen, there's, um... There, there's, like, some kind of, like, pyramid-ish designs going on mm-hmm. that I find interesting. I don't know. It's cool. Hmm. Like, in the Dalish, like, everyone loves to compare them to Native Americans, but there's nothing Native American about their culture or their design. The only, th- like, the only thing I feel like everyone keeps being like, oh, they need Americans is because, like, they got kicked off their land, but... When you actually read the lore, the, the the elves never actually got kicked off of their land. They were promised land and then it just never got it. Because they were slaves as much as the humans were slaves. And, and the elves fought with Andraste in order to get a home and land. And, and they were promised it and then they didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. No. Sad. I'm not saying that it doesn't suck to be an elf and that the humans didn't do shitty things. I'm just saying... Like, game-wise, there's nothing really about them that screams Native American. Yeah. They they feel much more like uh, the Romani or, like, the Jewish people after after they lost uh, Israel one of the first times. Because, <laughs> holy crap, man, they lost Israel a lot. Because... <laughs> Like, I mean, even the creators have come out and, and like, said that the, the elves were more based off of the Jewish people than they were off of anything else. So I'm like, why why does everyone keep comparing them to Native Americans? I don't really <laughs> see... Like, they feel way more Jewish. They live in ghettos. <laughs> and they're like, that's more black. And I'm like, no? That happened way later? <laughs> like... I don't know. They just feel way more Jewish to me. Maybe it's because, like, in in in, in America, anyway. Like, unless you actively look like you came straight from Israel, or you look like you're a Hasidic or an Orthodox Jew, you know the 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 anti-Semitism is is much more subtle and sinister, in a way. So it's not like this outright racism anymore. Mm-hmm. And except for now when, you know, you have Nazis walking in the street. But ignoring that, <laughs> you know, most Jewish people can pass off as being white and, and go about their lives as being white people. Mm-hmm. So, like, maybe that's where people are coming from. But I, I don't know. Anyway, like, the elves just seem way more Jewish to me. <laughs> that's just all I'm saying is that they feel more Jewish. <laughs> So yeah, Red is showing me a lot of different TV shows. Yes, I am, including this show called Lucifer. And oh my gosh, it's the best show. Yeah. Oh, and you mentioned Satanism. <laughs> I'm wondering how Lucifer would take that. It actually shows up in an episode. Oh, good. It's great. I love the show Lucifer. Okay. I can't so like wait. 
I the, my love for Supernatural kind of fell out at around the same time that Super that Lucifer was coming into being. And it was perfect because Lucifer has all of the things I've always wanted in Supernatural, but Lucifer actually gives them to me. <laughs> like, what if there were Satanists? There are actual Satanists that show up at one point, and Yay! it's great. And then and then you're like, okay, well, what about gay people? Literally the main character is bi slash pan. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. And it's not used as, like, a one-time thing or, like, a gimmick. It shows up a lot. <laughs> and I'm like, I like this. This is nice. I like this a lot. And he's not the only character that's bi, which makes me even happier. <laughs> I'm like, it's not just one character! Yes! And and then you have, like... I, I don't know. Like, it's just, it just, like, there's so many things in the show that make me so happy. So happy. Because at one point they're like, oh, you know, naked Chloe. And I was like, oh, it's going to be one of those things. But then immediately afterwards, naked Lucifer. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> it's both of them. I'm happy. It's equal. Well, and I mean, in, in Lucifer's defense, I think he did that actually on purpose. Yes, because, he did do that on purpose. Because, um, <laughs> you know, tit for tat is how he put it. <laughs> I just so much about the show because I'm always saying like I'm fine with sexualization so long as it's equal equal amounts of sexualization mm -hmm. you know like I want to see sexy guys as much as I want to see sexy girls so I I can't get really mad that that people use sex to sell stuff it works I'm just mad that it's only with one gender mm. sexualize all the people <laughs> and I so um what was the what was that commercial where you had the sexy lady eating, like, the hamburger. Yeah. Was that Burger King, I think? That's Carl's Jr., who uh, I refuse Carl's to eat at. So, yeah. So, so Carl's Jr., if you're watching, people from Carl's Jr., here's a tip. You can get me to eat a burger Did, if you feature guys doing that. <laughs> do do the, the sexy lady eating the hamburger thing, but, like, immediately after, do, like, those double... Um, advertisement type things that we oh, keep yeah. seeing all over the place. It's like, yeah. do you have this issue? And then the 30 seconds later, do you have the same issue we talked about 30 seconds ago? Like, oh. Because, <laughs> uh, like... I, I, except, except instead of uh, instead of a sexy lady, give us a sexy guy. Because, yeah. like... Just a thought. Yeah. Because, like, I, I understand asexuality. Cool. You know, it's there. But, and I, and I love my asexual friends. They're great people. And I understand there needs to be more stuff geared towards asexual people. You know, that's not just based off of sex. But if we're going to have sexualized advertising, which I feel is going to be the case for forever, because let's face it, a lot of us are very sexual. Mm. And, and sex appeals to a lot of us, because a lot of us feel that drive. Um, maybe feature it for everybody, not just one half of the population. Which is actually the smaller half anyway, because women 51%, men 50. <laughs> like, just putting that out there. And, and, and like, and even if we're going to talk about, like, non-binary people, I would like to see some sexy non-binary people advertising. That would be nice. Like, I would like to know that I, I could be sexy to people, because I'm non-binary. Yeah. Right? Like, I would like to see some sexy non-binary stuff happening. Just saying. Sexualize all the people. <laughs> then I'll be less upset. <laughs> yeah. Like, all people sexy is just what I'm saying. Alright, so quick drawing is... Quick draw is done. So, I have my, my quick etch out. I can go in and add details later. Now for a second quick etch. I was a model for that one, too! Yeah, I had... I had, um... I had I had Michaela doing some posing for me because I didn't have some re I didn't have enough reference. <laughs> I was like I need you I need I need your arms and hands to do a thing for me. <laughs> Cause hands I swear to God hardest thing in the world. Even after like I had a class that was just nothing but you know draw hands and I'm like oh crap. <laughs> do I have to? And it's like, it's not just me. I feel like hands are just difficult to draw, period. Because if you look at some stuff, like, from, oh, I want to say, not not medieval, what is it? Other, the Renaissance, there we go. If you look at hands from the Renaissance, god damn. 
Da Vinci did not know how to draw hands. <laughs> Which is fine. Like, a lot of people don't know how to draw hands. Hands are hard to draw. They freaking are, though! <laughs> so if you're an artist, Don't prepared. feel bad! Even the 16th Chapel has shitty hands! <laughs> if, if, you're, if you're wanting to be an artist, um, it is Red's recommendation that you practice at least 50 hands. It's not my recommendation. What do you don't speak for me? <laughs> my recommendation is don't feel bad if your hands don't look the, that great. Because, you know, uh, pretty much nobody can draw hands. <laughs> Unless you just... Or you, you know, can hide them. Yeah. Hide them off, off screen. Learn, learn to not draw hands. <laughs> Uh, uh, but then there will come a time when they were go they're gonna have to draw hands. Like, sure. Yeah. It'll be a life or death situation. I don't know what situation the artist will be in. Where they're just like, draw me fifty hands, and then he'll be like, oh no, I should have drawn hands before. <laughs> I don't know what situation you got yourself in. And then what weirdo wants pictures of hands? But yeah. Oh God. This is a great conversation to have. So right? if, we, if we haven't turned you off with talk about religion, here's some talks about... And this is great. I'm having fun. This is some okay. fun times. So remember to turn in later when we just play some Dragon Age. Yeah, that should be about 6 o'clock. Yep. So if you haven't gotten enough Dragon Age today... <laughs> from the art stream. From the art stream. Come join us for, for, for some actual gameplay. It'd be fun. I really just... I'm laughing so hard I can't even draw this bow correctly. I'm sorry. It came out looking weird. Well, I'm sure you can fix it. Yeah, later. I just want to draw the figure right now. I'm trying to get the outfit down. Alright, let's see. Because I realized I made uh, Marius, one of my characters, into um, into a mage. Because I was thinking biotics equals mage, but, like, the way, oh, I don't know, it, like, it didn't fit him, because, like, it, in my webcam, like, AU, he's an archer, and it works so well, especially since he's a sniper in the, in the Mass Effect universe, you know? So I was like, damn, why didn't I make him an archer? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm making him an archer, especially since, like, that suits him way more than the con kind of, like, polished mage. Um, because Marius is kind of this, like, really wild, I grew up on the streets and had a really shitty upbringing, like, kind of a guy. So, like, him having a much more, gri like, wild look to him is, is, um, not grizzled, but wild. Like, I, I never really think of Marius as grizzled. Because mm. when I think of that, I'm, I think more like, um... Clint Eastwood, and I'm like, that's not really Marius. <laughs> Marius is more like, um, oh, he's, he's kind of like, uh, like if you're walking through the jungle and you turn around and suddenly there's like a panther or a snake or something, mm. you know, that's the, the kind of feel I want, I want him to have. He's, he's very much... This, uh, this guy that has this feel like he's never quite at home in, in the city or in, like, you know, civilized or suburban, air, like, uh, settings. He, he's, he's not a civilized man. <laughs> he always kind of feels, like, very rough around the edges and kind of, like, you know, something is gonna set him off. When really he's like he's such a zen guy, mm. you know. He and he's and he is very zen. He's just also extremely intense. So, and I was like, him being a mage that doesn't fit very well, because, or at least not a mage that uses magic speci specifically all the time. You know, mm -hmm. like I I need him to be more of a character who can use magic but is so weak with it. He just basically does not use it or only uses it to enhance certain abilities. Because, and then, and so then I started thinking of the crew more as, like, uh, Pathfinder characters than as, um, Dragon Age characters. 
Mm -hmm. Because it just wasn't fitting in my head when I went off of only, like, four classes. Which is what you get in Dragon Age. It's mage, rogue... It's mage, dual-wielding rogue, archer, and... Warrior. Yeah. And I was like, well, two different types of warriors, so I guess five. Um... Because you have shield and sword and then, like, two-handed. Yeah, so, but but that's very limiting. And my brain, like, wasn't, like, I, I couldn't really get the characterization down of the crew and I couldn't figure out why. And now I'm like, it's because I was limiting myself to this stupid, like, five-class <laughs> thing when I should really been thinking about them in Pathfinder terms. Mm. So I started doing that instead. And I was like, if I were to think of them as Pathfinder characters, then Marius would be a ranger. Like a high class ranger. One of the ones that gets ranger spells. <laughs> you know? Because mm -hmm. that's always fitted him way more. Or at least in that those types of settings. Because in, in Mass Effect, he, he grew up on Omega and was a street kid. So in that kind of situation, urban really... But he's he, in that case, he's an urban ranger. Okay. You know, like, like okay, so there's this uh, subclass in, in rangers for, for Pathfinder. And it's... Um, it's Urban Ranger, where they instead of being out in the wilds, they're in the city. You know? And and they get more used to people. And, and I thought about it in that way, and I was like, okay, now this fits way better. Because mm. if I think of him as a ranger, because ranger was a class for rogues in Awakenings. And, and in Origins. Okay. And you could summon creatures. And it was for, for rogues. And I was like, that would suit Marius a lot better. <laughs> So I thought about that instead, and I was like, oh, that's way, that's, that's so, that's perfect. So when I thought about that, I was like, maybe he has magic, but he's, like, it's so weak that he would never actually been able to be a mage, and if he went to the circle, he would have been made tranquil. And I was like, so what if instead of going to the circle... You know, because he was raised by Batik and never went to the circle. Because goddamn Batik would never get up, give up power for a circle. <laughs> like, there's ways to gain power in a circle, like, very easily. You know, so long as you know how to manipulate the system. And Batik would. But I felt like Batik would never allow herself to get entered into a position where she'd have someone above her or be in a cage. And... I was like, so I, I can't have her do that. So she's like a noble woman who is a mage, but hid it from everybody. Mm. You know? And I like that way better. It suits her. And, like, since she kind of half-raised Marius, I could see her, like, teaching him just enough. Sorry, I was busy tumbling. What you making? I'm doing Marius now. So we finished Dizol. He's over here. This is the sketch for Dizol. I will go back and I will color this in a second. And right now we're doing the sketch for Marius. Um, I posed for both of them. Yeah. Mm, look at that long, luxurious hair. He's not supposed to have long hair. He's supposed to have, like, mid-length, kind of, like, wild hair. So I'm trying to, like, do it choppy and mm. stuff. It's just, like, it's caught in a breeze kind of thing. The bangs. Yeah. I was kind of trying to do it, like, caught in the wind kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be gorgeous. Yep. So more like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've always kind of pictured Marius as having this kind of, like... Think Keith! From... From... Ah, okay. From uh, Voltron. That's the kind of, like, not an actual mullet, but close enough. <laughs> Business up front, party in the back. Yeah. Which is just, like, short in the front, you know. Or yeah. short in, in, in the front and long in the back. Um, oh, that looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna do his... He looks handsome. Yeah. Do his outfit. Which is gonna be... Very archer esque. So it's gonna go short sleeve on it with a guard on this arm. And maybe strap around the chest.
So I like the idea of, of basically Marius being the the type of um, ranger who gets spells. So he's like, so he like enchants his arrows and can talk to animals or communicate with them better and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I pictured that and there's this kind of um, mage class in Awakenings called uh, Keeper. And um, like specifically it's for the Dalish and you get it if you get close enough to um, one of the, the side, uh, one of your companion characters, uh, Vilana. And um, Vilana kind of teaches it to, uh, to your character, if your character is a mage or if your character is close enough to her and is like an elf. Um, Cause Vilana is like super racist against anyone who's not an elf. Exact opposite of Sarah, who is super racist against anybody who is an elf. <laughs> despite the fact that she's an elf herself. Anyway. Um, so, but the, the keeper gets, like, abilities like turning trees to life and communicating with animals and that kind of thing. So I was like, that sounds more like Marius. So what if Marius was, like, soup, like, had magic, but it was, like, not all that strong, at least basically not strong enough to really, uh, keep him out of trouble with, like, with demons if he was put through the harrowing. And, um, I liked that idea, but I wanted to also, like, incorporate, like, that he could still use the magic since he never went to the, um, never went to the circle. So I was like, what if he just used it to enhance his, to enhance his arrows and stuff like that? Because you get, like, flaming arrows and that kind of stuff in, in Dragon Age. So I was like, that'd be an interesting idea. Mm. He's showing a bit of midriff there. Well, that's not his midriff. That's a belt. Oh, okay. Sorry, I wasn't. I know. I I normally like go in after I've done like a portion on the belts and then, you know, and then draw some more stuff to him. And it's so funny because he's coming out looking like kind of a cross between Link and um Legolas so far, <laughs> 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 which is weird and not at all what I wanted. <laughs> I wanted him to come off looking more, um... Well, what color is Marius's hair? It's a dirty blonde slash a light brown. Yeah, so that that will give you enough of a difference, I think. Yeah. But, I mean, design-wise, I still want to go off something different. Maybe more soulless and less... (laughs) And less some of these other characters. Some more... Like that, maybe? No, that still seems so Link-like. What the fuck? <laughs> I need to, I need to switch things up here. I know. I know what I'll do. This will fix it. So what we're going to do instead is I'm going to take... I'm going to leave that belt, but then I'm going to... Secondary belt here. So his pants. Yes. That That is what that would be for. <laughs> You can't have Marius's midriff showing. He wouldn't be allowed at school. (laughs) I mean, you're not wrong. That was always the the rules of school as far as I knew. Yep. You you can't show, you can't do spaghetti straps, you can't show them your midriff. School... School dress codes are dumb. Yeah, they are. Especially since so much of them are geared only towards girls. Yeah. It's like... Guys can get away, like, get away with wearing literally naked women on their shirts. But God help if a girl shows up bearing her midriff. Yeah. But thankfully I didn't have to experience much of that. Yeah. Because I was basically in private school all the way up until 8th grade. <laughs> uh, I I got it a little so, bit, but not much. So like, there, were, there were a lot of uniforms where, uh, yeah. for, for me. Like, <laughs> for, a little short, for a short while in elementary school, my, my, my school tried to do this, like, whole, um, uh, 
uniform thing. And I, I kind of liked it to a point, but then after that, I'm like, but I want to wear pink cowboy boots. I was really into pink cowboy boots when I was little. I had to have a new pair every year because my feet kept growing. So I had to have a new pair because the yeah. old pair didn't fit anymore. And I really want pink cowgirl boots that I could wear. So <laughs> I was really into being a uh, like a cowgirl slash cowboy. God knows why. No, that, that is perfectly fine. Yeah. Everyone has a horse face. I suppose. My horse face lasted until high school. I really wanted to learn how to ride horses better. And I just never did. Sad face. Well, we are in the desert, and I'm sure there's, like, horse corrals somewhere around here. There's literally one not even, like, a block away. <laughs> I'm sure we can research how much it is, and... I'm not actually, like, no, I don't, like, want to do it, like, right now. Like, if I won the, the Gig Harbor house, yeah. <laughs> if I won that HGTV dream home, watch out. <laughs> watch out, horsies. Red's coming for ya. I'm a good... Learn how to ride ya. I'm, I'm a fairly decent rider to be, actually, because I, I did get to ride horses whenever my mom and I went on vacation. Mm -hmm. Like, because my mom loves camping and shit. <laughs> but... Oh, no. Huh? You don't like camping? I like camping to a point. Like... Oh, you don't like camping with your mom. <laughs> I feel like I should always put her in an end of next to an vacation, any vacation I went on with my mom. I liked it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was stuck with my mother. Because <laughs> there's always, like, there's at least that one story of something my mom made me do that backfired, like, horrendously. Like, the last time I went to Hawaii with my grandfather and my mom, the thing that backfires horrendously, my mom and I went on a snorkel trip. Which, oh, no. I like snorkeling. I really do. But we had to go out on a boat to get there, and me and boats don't mix so well. Because every time, every goddamn fucking time, I get on a boat... I end up getting sick unless it's going really fast. And this is, like, immediately after Hawaii had mi had been missed by a hurricane and it had gone down to a tropical storm. Mm -hmm. So, waves are super rocky. And, like, like, super, super choppy. And, and like, there's wind everywhere. I got sick so fast. And then we get out there and I'm like... Fuck it, I don't care, it'll be fine, I'll just get my snorkel gear on and we'll snorkel, this will be great. And I get my snorkel gear on and we're out and I should be having the time of my life, but I feel like I'm gonna throw up into my snorkel. Ugh. <laughs> Which passes after a little while and then I feel fine, up until... The waves start rocking you. No, up until we're getting back on the boat and as I'm getting on the boat... The, oh, there no. comes this wave, and I'm halfway on the platform, and suddenly, whoosh! Water is, like, two feet away. I'm still half on the platform. And so there's this, like, whoosh feeling, like, when, when like, the floor gets out from under you on a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that. Not great for when you're... Oh, no, not great. Oh, God. I was immediately... I have to throw up now. <laughs> So I get I get up out of the boat, I tear my snorkel mask off, and I'm leaning over the side immediately throwing up. And this is, like, really close to where everybody else on this catamaran has to climb up into the boat, and I'm just hurling. <laughs> and then it gets worse, because my mom is like, well, we have to get you near the back of the boat, but the back of the boat is where people are climbing back in. And my mom, in her genius... Takes me to the top, because it's a split level boat. She takes me to the top half, to the upper level. And it's like, Mom, insane. Lean over the side, lean over the side. And I nearly hit someone on the bottom level. So then I'm throwing up on the deck and my mom is yelling at me for doing it. And I'm like, I almost hit someone with my vomit. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then we get but back and we're on shore. <laughs> and she's like... Oh, well, let's go out and do a new thing after we get back to shore. And I'm like, I spent this morning throwing up. I would rather just, like, lie back and not do anything for the rest of the day. <laughs> and she didn't seem to get it that I was just not feeling up to anything the rest of the day. 
Like, she's like, you're such a, you never want to do anything. And and, 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 and I'm like, I threw up today. <laughs> it's kind of like that. I was frozen today. Except I threw up a lot today. Give me a break. <laughs> okay. To, to no. counterbalance my experience with, <laughs> with Hawaii. Which, that wasn't my Wait. only experience. That was no, just I the know, worst I one. I know. I know. <laughs> not, not even, like, it wasn't... I'm not going to say that was the worst like, one. Okay. Because, like, when we... I also... We also learned that I was seasick... That I got seasick in Hawaii when, like, when we first went when I was, like, five. Because mm. we went on a whale watching trip and I spent the whole time throwing up. Literally oh, the whole the time. The were very thankful. Right? <laughs> Everyone else, oh, look at the whales! Me, <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. This so has been to fun to balance that. Yeah. And for anybody listening who wants to go on a Hawaii trip and that costs as little as you possibly can manage, bring some snorkel gear. We rented ours, which is fine. Yeah. And we went to, um, gosh, I can't even think what it is now. We went to one of the, um, cultural centers yeah. on the Big Island, because we only stayed on the Big Island when we went to Hawaii. That's the only island I haven't been to. <laughs> and on the not pretty side, so not the rainforest side, Yeah, it, it pretty much looks rather like what it looks like outside. Yeah. <laughs> Except more pointy rocks. That are darker colored. Yeah. Because lava. Um, yeah, but basically, we got to swim with dolphins for huh. free. That's cool. Because on the day that my family decided to go snorkeling in this area, um, the dolphins decided to join us. <laughs> and it was so cool, too, because they were spinning dolphins. Ooh, spinner. Spinner dolphins. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, they they start low in the ocean, start spinning themselves as they go higher and higher up into the uh, uh, higher up in the waves. There you go. Yes, in the waves, and they jump out and while they're spinning, and then land. And oh my gosh, it was so cool because <laughs> they just kept doing this like five, six, seven times in a row. Yeah. We got to swim with them. It was awesome. Yeah. I we also got to see some pretty pretty fish too. Yeah. So that's cool. I, I've swum with turtles in Hawaii, which is fun. Yeah, my stepbrother got to swim with turtles. <laughs> I was not having it that day for some reason. <laughs> like I um my uh because cause uh okay, so first time I went to Hawaii, mm -hmm. uh Kauai and Oahu. Okay. I do not remember Oahu. <laughs> I barely remember Kauai from that trip. I don't really remember much. I was five, so I don't really remember pretty much anything except for the boat trip where I was throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, that wasn't even my first time, because my first time in Hawaii, I was a baby. Yeah, you, I'm not going to count that one. Yeah, my mom... I mean, yeah. my mom says I was in Hawaii, but... I hadn't been born yet. Mom was pregnant with me. <laughs> That's like when my mom talks about me being in Europe because I'm like, I have never been to Europe except for that time we went to Scotland. <laughs> like, what is this being in Russia shit? <laughs> well, I was pregnant with you. That doesn't count. So, no, what was it? Um... <laughs> So, so there was that time, and, and that's when my, my grandparents bought their timeshare mm -hmm. in Hawaii. And, and so we just kept going back every other year. Okay. Every other year, we would go to Hawaii for Christmas. Nice. It was awesome. Are you kidding me? I loved it as a kid. That's why basically half of my vocabulary is Hawaiian. <laughs> like, like... They like Kalikimaka. Oh my god, like, half of, half of my child growing, growing, growing up, instead of doing thumbs, like, if I, everybody went to go do a thumbs up, my, my pinky finger would stick out. Yeah! Because I was so used to doing the hang loose thing. <laughs> and, like, anytime anyone talked about Hawaii and they got the island names wrong, I'd be like, it's Kauai. <laughs> I guess an idiot child. Just like, what was wrong? 
<laughs> Stupid white girl. <laughs> well, to be fair. <laughs> Mikey. <laughs> to be fair. When I was a kid, everybody got my name wrong, and I would always have to correct them because I was very much anal about people getting my name right. Well, that was me with my last and they, name. They can never get it right, which is fine. <laughs> Nowadays, it's fine. <laughs> and, and because I've had my name butchered over the years so many times, I have finally gotten used to, you know what? Some people are just never going to pronounce my name right. Oh no, I sit back and wait for people to pronounce it wrong with this look on my face like, I'm waiting for it, I'm waiting for it, do it, do it. <laughs> and, like, and I will admit, what I think is the funniest part yeah. is in college, some professors didn't even try. <laughs> well, look at they, the they look at, they, they le- they're like, okay, so Tom, Jim, uh, Anson. <laughs> like for me... I just crack up because my first name's so easy, yeah. and my, my last name is Grafstrom, mm-hmm. which it, it does not sound the way it's spelled. Yeah, I think it does. <laughs> yeah, it, but here's the thing, it's like everyone, everyone pronounces it wrong, which mm. cracks me up. <laughs> I have heard some truly crazy pronunciations of my last name. The most famous being this one time when somebody went, Gear Sturm, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I was just like, no. <laughs> oh, well, God. Well, to be fair. I like that version of Dorian. Isn't that version of Dorian great? Mm. Right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and in my principal's defense, mm. I was never really like the bad kid. So no wonder she got my name wrong. Yeah. But still, M-I-K-E-L-L-A. Michaela. How do you get Malika out of that? A A Ron <laughs> Balake. I just that's what it that's what it is, basically. <laughs> well, how, how do you get Malika from the spelling of my name? I don't understand. <laughs> you literally had an A A Ron moment with the teacher. The principal. During an award ceremony. I had that on a bus when the principal pronounced my name. Graf Storm. And I looked at him dead in the eye and was like, that is not how my name is pronounced. <laughs> like, because he, sp- he pronounced everybody else's name, most of which was Garcia, mm-hmm. correctly. And I looked at him dead in the eye and I was like, that is not how my name is pronounced. Because because he said it with such conviction, too. Graf Storm. And I'm like, no. Because <laughs> I'm like, is the O before the R? No. no. Then it's not Storm. It's Strum, like a guitar. <laughs> you just messed up, a a Yeah, exactly. That is, for real, that is my favorite sketch of all time, period. The funniest thing was, during oh those, God. like, cause she, cause I, cause I was that good of a kid where it's like, my name was always called up for like, honor roll, that kind of thing. Same. So... Every single year. Where are the weapons in this game? Every single year. Yeah. Like, the first time, I wasn't even expecting it. So she said, Malika Anson? (laughs) And I'm just looking around like, who the heck has my last name? (laughs) Because, I mean, I know my last name is pretty, it's pretty a, it's pretty much a white name. I'm mostly British. I get it. Yeah. And we were in a mostly white school. Yeah. And I knew my brother was in the same school, so yeah. I, I knew to expect for Peter. Yeah. And I know my name is weird, and most likely it's going to get messed up, but who the heck is this Malika person? Who, what were they She repeated it like two or three times before I realized, oh, she's talking about me. Can I pause for a second? What fucking demon were they thinking of when they put that in? I'm going to have to, like, when, when, when we edit this, I'm going to have to have a t- like take a picture of this and put it in there because what in the F, man? That would be seriously frightening and I would kill whoever programmed that into a game. It's like what? this wraith woman with, like, vines coming out of her eyes and her mouth and she's coming out of this flower and I'm just like, no. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm like, hello, no. <laughs> nope. I would nope out if I saw that in a game. I would nope out. Like, that's that's a nope. Like this looks like something out of like um, out of, out of a 
come on. What's the name of that really super hard game? Um, come on. Dark Souls. That looks like it's out of Dark Souls. Okay. That is the fear demon from the game, so I'm like, whatever. And then this, this despair demon thing is just hilarious. <laughs> Broken heart, drinks, throwing up. <laughs> that's great. But... But, and, like, that's a desire demon. That's a pride demon. I that, I don't know what they were doing with that, but okay. Gluttony. What, this one? I don't know. I'm throwing ideas out. You start mentioning the, the, the deadly sins and... I, I, don't, I don't know. It just looks, it looks seriously creepy, and I'm just like, what in the F? And then there's these things that... Slenderman! <laughs> <laughs> Gibbering horrors. So yeah, we will take some pictures and post them up. Yeah, because these things are... Or if you have a uh, dragon... Or the art, if you ever get a chance to look at the art of, dra of Dragon Age Inquisition, on page... Where, where was it? No. On page 246 through 249. Holy crap. <laughs> you will be giggling. And also going, no. No, no, no. No, no. No, no. I'm very thankful they did not put that in the game. Here's a bow I can use as reference. Finally. Like, where the frick did they put all the bows? Did they just not want to draw them? <laughs> Why are there no I bows? Guess not. Okay, so here's the mage stuff again. I just want to see the weapons. Why are there never any weapons in these? Art of books. <laughs> Hi, Bull. <laughs> Hi, Bull. No. I know, I have a problem. I need to stop looking at his butt. <laughs> <laughs> Just such a good butt. <laughs> okay. Hi, Morgan. And that's different villains, blah, blah, blah. It's friggin' Hey, bows! Okay. Bows I can use. Yay. Those look like Lord of the Rings. Why, why are you basing your stuff off of Lord of the Rings? Why, why are you doing that? Storyboards. Storyboards. I give up. <laughs> I'm just gonna look up some bows. <laughs> cool looking bows, how about that? <laughs> I'm getting annoyed. No, why, why do you do this every time? No. Stop that. Sorry this is taking so long. I'm just, I'm having, like, anytime I have trouble with a weapon, I always end up looking it up, because, like, basic shape, I can kind of get down, but, you know, I want to do... something a little cooler. Cool bow designs. And then I can go from there. Images. Not modern. I don't want modern. Here we go. I like that one. This is probably out of Skyrim. <laughs> I love how I can look at another thing and be like, that's from Skyrim. <laughs> or that's from this other game. All right, let's see. We're going to zoom in, and what we're going to do is. Okay. That looks like it would hurt, because it looks kind of like it has spikes, like, see? There on the handle. Like, I know it's supposed to look cool, but that looks like it would hurt. Uh, I think that might be a... Like a little painful, right? Yeah, a little bit. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think. Because typically they'd put like leather around that part, right? Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe it's like leather, but it, it, at the same time it's also metallic looking. Right? It looks like metal and it looks like kind of like like the, what uh, the design I'm doing here, but with pedal work. Which is cool in theory, 
But that would hurt because the metal would dig into your hand. Yeah. So I'm not doing that. <laughs> or maybe it's ribbon. I don't know. Yeah. It, and it still looks severely painful. So I'm just going to kind of use that shape, though, to help me with my own design here. Sounds good. I'm working on writing a story. Yeah. It's about I, werewolves I, and romance. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I should be working on my um, my fantasy novel at some point. I miss working on it. Which, my fantasy novel was more about, like, you know, potential genocide. <laughs> because, you know, why not, you know, because go big or go home. <laughs> Basic shape of the weapon down. And then we'll go from there. So basic shape first, which is a upward curve into a downward curve. So <sighs> symmetry is hard. You know what's cool is this kind of looks like um hollow horn from the game, because Hollow's Oh. Hmm. Okay, the bowstring went from this end to this end and then got pulled back. It would go Okay, getting the basic shape down, which is important. Because this is still a sketch, so I can go back and change it if I want. Which is good. Okay. Uh, somehow that still looks a little off, don't it? Which? The bow. Oh. Hmm. How do I fix it? Hmm. Raise it entirely. Because apparently I fixed it. <laughs> Try again. Yeah. Is there no way to... Um, to what? I guess, like, copy-paste it sort of a thing? No, not really. Mm. There we go. That That's how it would kind of be like, right? When it curves? That, yeah. that actually looks much better. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up with my own design uh, for this. All right. Sounds good. Because what it was is the position of the bow was coming out weird. Mm. Is what was throwing me off. So, But now that I have a position down, it should be much easier to then go in and draw where the strings are going to be and all that. Yeah. Not messed up your beautiful man. Right? He looks so pretty. He came out very good. I'm very pr proud. Looks way more like uh, how Marius would actually look for once. Because, <laughs> that, that, like, really, it's so weird. Because I, I kind of use, like, certain characters as, like, marker points for whether or not I'm doing the characterization right. And one of them is... is is Ilias, because if Ilias doesn't feel right, then something's really off. Because he's normally the one I start with. Him and Jezora. If they don't feel right, then something's really off, because they're like they're the two I normally start with. Mm. Um, and Marius is like one of the last ones I I, I go to, to to see whether or not I'm doing things right, because Marius is like 
Because his characterization is really hard. So, because he's, he's always just going to be a little bit different depending on the, um, the setting, you know? Because Marius is, is, is that character who I want to feel, to feel wild, but also has to know, like, the reality of the situation. He's very much a realist and kind of a pessimist and... Mm. You know, he's the one who's had a rough life and knows, like, how rough it can be for people, but also understands where other people are coming are coming from. And, you know, he, he tends to be the one that, that, like, is brutally honest to everyone all the time, you know, regardless yeah. of, of where they're coming from. Because even among, like, poor and, and disenfranchised people, I wanted him to be severely like just really Seaberry! Hi Seaberry! We're drawing Marius. Yes, who is one of my original characters uh, originally created for my Mass Effect um, blog um, and has since been incorporated into a bunch of different things and this is from the Dragon Age AU so he's my Dragon Age OCA too I guess you could say and I'm currently drawing him with his bow because I, when I created my original Dragon Age uh, AU, it didn't seem right. So now I'm adjusting it. And one of the ways I can do that is by creating art for it. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm trying to make his bow look both symmetrical and decent. And I'm having a tough time because I, I don't have a lot of breath bows around for reference. I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? That we don't have bows around for you to reference. That's fine. I have swords for reference and you guys didn't provide that. That was me. Oh, you know what the other thing is? Is I think I'm putting lines for the string where they should not be going. <laughs> like, they should not be back here. They should be here because that's where he's holding it, so... That's where the string should be going. And now okay. that I'm thinking about it, the way that I was taught to do bows, yeah, you had one finger above the above the arrow, yeah, and two below, yeah. I think so. when I was doing it, I was imagining just two. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Yeah, it's fine. That's where the arrow is going to be. You see, there's a lot of realism going on here. <laughs> For a character who's an elf. <laughs> okay, so one finger there, and then there's going to be... In... See, very like swords. Yeah, I also like swords. That's why I have uh, quite a few of them. Well, I have... A wooden sword, I have a short sword that I bought when I was in Japan ages and ages ago. Um, I've got that rapier that is sitting at the end of my bed. Um, I've got that inflatable sword. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know yeah. Robert brought swords. Yeah, he, I brought daggers. He's He's got like that padded sword and then he's got like a bunch of wooden swords. Mm. Yeah. Mine are actually real. <laughs> hey, that one's real. That one's mine. The one with the dragon. Oh, yeah. That's a dagger. Yeah. yeah. I brought daggers. Well, it's more of a knife, really. That is a knife. <laughs> yeah. I have a dagger. I have that same one, but in a much larger form. <laughs> <laughs> the hilt is so large, it sliced open the bottom of my foot when I accidentally stepped on it. Christmas. Well, the day after Christmas. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Oh no, it hurt. It hurt like a bitch. And I have the scar to prove it. It's right- wait, is it this foot or the other foot? It's this foot. There's the scar. It's right there. It runs up the length of my foot. Wow. Right, yeah. Like, right- yeah. Because it curves because of the goddamn curve in the dragons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. See? Mm-hmm. That line? That's from where I stepped on the- on the hilt. It just slays straight through my foot. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> 
I've got a couple scars like that, like like the one on my finger. We we can share scar stories. No, no, no. Like there's just like look, that one right, right beneath my knuckle. That's where mm-hmm. I was, uh, I was chopping potatoes with uh, with a set of new knives, <laughs> and my dog at the time, Luke, who was very excitable when my mom came home because he loved my mom. Uh, my mom came home and he was in the kitchen with me because he can't be away from because he couldn't be away from people he was a golden retriever had to be near the people um he ran right past me knocked into my legs and it jostled me and the knife i was using um and the knife was brand new so it's slight and very very sharp so it sliced through the potato and my finger (laughs) ouch yeah (laughs) And I was like, why? Yeah, to be fair, my my battle scars, not quite as... As deep? Uh, no, it, no? It, they were pretty deep. But, uh... Shit! That is not the erase. <laughs> that was not the eraser. <laughs> Oops. Not as fun-loving as your dog Luke mm. getting overly excited. Mm. My dad showed my brother... Um, his, uh, whittling toolkit. Oh. And, um... What's that timer for? That's not a timer. It's oh. a strange number calling me. Oh. Alright, so we got ten minutes left on this stream. But yeah, so, um, my dad was showing off his whittling toolkit. Yeah. And he's like, here, here, Peter, you try one. Here, Kelly, you try this one. And, um... One thing you have to know about whittling tools is um, sometimes the wood doesn't want to do what you're wanting it to do, Mm. and the tool will slip, so be careful of that, because uh, I basically jammed one of the whittling tools into my two fingers. Oh, God! (laughs) Yeah, there was a lot of blood. (laughs) Just like my favorite fighter from 8-Bit Theater. Aw, 8-Bit Theater is great. So, so I did what you're supposed to do with with cuts, especially deep ones. Yeah. You put you apply pressure, put it above your head. So I was basically walking out of the garage into my house looking like this. <laughs> That's great. And Dad was like, okay, you're gonna put you're gonna put your hand under the cold water, okay? Ready? Ready. Okay, here we go. And the moment I moved my thumb away yeah. from the injury, I started blacking out. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Yeah, we went to the hospital for that. That that sounds like the correct thing to do. Yeah, I got stitches. All right, so I didn't like the, the, the length of the staff, so I've decided to shorten it just a little. I'm still making it, like... Those knotty parts of uh, of a tree that you see that kind of look like a mm-hmm. like a cudgel or yeah. a shillelagh, because I don't know what it is about me, but I kind of like shillelaghs. <laughs> <laughs> shillelagh, by the way, is a weapon like a cudgel. They're kind of really mad and nasty, actually, in real life. Don't don't ever say shillelagh like it's. Like, it's something funny, because, dude, no, shillelaghs suck. <laughs> like, you get hit with a shillelagh, that, that thing is going to hurt. Alright, so. There we go, now we get a blade, sickle type blade at the end of our magic staff. That I'm definitely going to have to clean up here in a second, but. There we go, that looks good. Alright, so we had a couple of quick draws today, which were me drawing two characters very quickly as well as quickly as I could um we've got Dizol here who's our mage and Marius who is our archer slash ranger so don't they look beautiful right so great <laughs> uh and they're both uh based they're, they're based in Dragon Age so that should tie us into the char- our first episode of character creator or Red Romance is Everyone. We haven't quite decided on a name yet. Well, I think Robert really wanted to call it Building Character. Oh, yeah. Or Character but, uh, Building. We can, we can, I think there can be a happy middle. Yeah. Rob will probably get mad at us for doing this, but I don't care. <laughs> it's your show, so you get you can 
you get to have some say in it, I think. Yeah. But it'll be building character. Red romance is all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're premiering that later tonight at 6 o'clock. So we'll have an hour break. <laughs> Yay! While we eat something and set up. Yeah. And then we will come back to this probably on Thursday. Just adding in some detail now. Because I don't intend to do like a crazy amount of uh, stuff to these designs. I'm just gonna basically like clean them up a bit and then color them. There will be no like final line stage for these guys. I'm just gonna clean up the lines I already have and then go from there. Which is a lot different than what I normally do. But I'm trying to do these as fast as I can. Because uh, I really want to get these changes out. Basically. Very quickly. So. Alright. So we got six minutes. Six minutes to just do a little so bit. Clean, clean up a little bit of the artwork. Yep. Which is what we're going to do. Because I like it. But I want it to be a little bit cleaner. And uh, the two characters that I've done are... Uh, Dizol, who is um, really late addition to the crew, he's the he the the uh, main commander of the crew's uh, twin brother. In this case, in some cases, he's her clone. In this case, he's her twin because there are no clones in magic universes. So he is just her brother, her twin brother, but still. Um, and this is one of the rare occasions where Dizal and Dizora were raised together, because in most situations where they're twins, I have them raised apart, but in this case, I wanted them, I wanted them raised together. Um, and Dizol is kind of like the, not, he's not Dizora's foil, but, uh, he is basically a good uh, an anathema to his sister because um, his sister really loves their dad and kind of idolized him no matter what universe they're in. And Dizol kind of hates their dad. <laughs> like, he's kind of like, our dad was a dick! <laughs> who did not deserve my... Who did not deserve to be idolized by my sister as much as he is. And he doesn't blame his sister for that. He really blames the dad for that. <laughs> Because in most cases, he's right. He's right. The dad did not deserve it. And, and Dezora always, always um, super idolizes her father because she always wanted her father's love and, and, um, and, and basically his... Uh... Well, she's basically Tarzan. <laughs> with with Kerjack in, in that Tarzan movie. <laughs> She just, Phil Collins Tarzan movie? Yeah, Phil Collins Tarzan movie. She she really wanted to be like, uh, she really wanted to make her dad proud of her and um, and to be accepted by him, basically, as his like heir. Because Dizel never wanted it. So. And I really like the idea that, that Dizel is kind of like the... Um, figure that kind of tells his sister, you know, our dad wasn't all that great. And she knows that on some level, but at the same point in time, she's like, she, he was still my, he was still my dad and I still love him and da 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 da. So, anyway, this is Dragon Age vs. Dizzle. It was fun, fun, fun. Alright, so. I think that's where we're going to call it here for the day. I'm going to say this is... We're going to close that. We're going to save this one. It's going to be... There he is. And we're going to... Home studio?
good OBS. Scene. Hello! Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This has been great. Remember to join us later tonight in, oh god, in, in basically an hour and two minutes at six o'clock, our time, uh, because we will be streaming Dragon Age Origins, and this time I will not be playing a mage. I'm forcing myself to not play a mage. <laughs> Uh, so, if you are at all interested in seeing, uh, me play Origins for, like, the 15th time, and for Michaela to experience it for the first time, please join us tonight at 6 o'clock. Yay! Remember that these streaming episodes and series are brought to you by viewers like you, who support us on Patreon. <laughs> who support us on Patreon, if you're on Twitch, you give us the bits, or... Uh, the subscription yep. things. Follow. Uh, yeah, the follows. Yes. Help a lot. Yes. Um, you can also... If you're on YouTube, um, not using your uh, ad blockers yeah. is a great help. Yeah. Uh, yes, RAR. See very RAR. Like, comment, subscribe if you're on YouTube. Yes. Uh, we thank you for, vi for spending your time with us. We really appreciate it. What? Oh. <laughs> and we Tell will... Tell me what to do. <laughs> 